have to ask you your thoughts on the final experiment. Two possible outcomes. I'm going to go for the most dangerous ones first. Uh, got to have the anti-vax movement in there, haven't we? This is the 10 second intro. Today I'm talking with Katz, aka Conspiracy Katz, aka Culture Katz. Katz is a teacher and YouTuber who makes awesome videos. You should go subscribe to him. Topics that we covered are in the timeline description below. Thank you, Katz, for the conversation. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Time's up, run. What's up, everybody? I'm back. And if you don't know who this guy is, shame on you. Shame. But I am, of course, speaking with the artist formerly known as Conspiracy Katz. Now, Culture Katz. Katz, thanks for doing this and welcome to the show. Mate, thank you so much for, for having us on. I'm a big, like, like I've said off uh, off camera, I'm a big fan of the interviews, the style that you've got, the way that you engage with people and stuff. It's uh, it's really good to listen to. So absolute pleasure, mate, to be here. Thank you for, for asking us. There's a lot I want to talk to you about, including the final experiment, Young Earth Creationists, your experience uh, recently attending a talk by Mark Steele. You spoke about that on your channel. Conspiracy thinking in general, conspiracy tier list, which we'll get to, and a game that you and Simon Dan used to play with your guests, Guess the Conspiracy, all that to come. But first, let's get a little background and catch up on what you've been up to lately. So the Conspiracy Cats channel was primarily about debunking Flat Earth. And of course, you don't operate that channel anymore. You passed it to MC Tune, and now it's Conspiracy Tunes. But this is not the case for Culture Cats channel. Can you explain for those watching what the Culture Cats channel is all about? So it originally started as a place where I could just make stuff that wasn't to do with Flat Earth because um, I just, I was, I'd had enough of, of that and it wasn't entertaining me anymore. Um, and it's gone through various phases, but I gave it a bit of a clean up a few weeks ago. And now all you'll find on that channel are not necessarily debunking videos. Uh, some, some might be debunking, but it's more about reporting on scientific misinformation and more serious things. So for example, uh, one of the recent videos was about an illegal school that was teaching their children conspiracy theories, um, such as, you know, uh, how to survive in the apocalypse after the Great Reset, you know, this has been taught to actual kids. So I try and uh, try and do videos that kind of report on those kind of topics. Now, medical misinformation as well. Very, very rarely will the word flat earth, the words flat earth even come out my mouth. Now, you had quite the popular channels. I mean, between Baldy Cats and Conspiracy Cats, those channels were quite popular. Why why give them up, you know, almost two years ago now to, to the day almost, and then start this new channel, Culture Cats? Why, why, why the change? It, it took me a long time to make the decision. Um, I knew that I didn't want to make Flat Earth content anymore. Um, and th at that time in my life, I was so unbelievably busy. I literally was working seven days a week in my, just in my normal life. And it was limiting the content I could put out on those channels. So I was maybe getting a video out once every, by the end, maybe once every two months. So of course the channel starts to stop growing. It starts dying. And I thought, I thought I'd hate to see these channels just die. So if I'm not going to make use of them, like let's give them to MC Toon and, and Mr. Sensible. And, and they will make use of them. And then what I'll do is I'll set something up for myself that I can just make any old rubbish just to enjoy myself on YouTube that I can knock together in an hour or two um, that wouldn't have gone down well on the Conspiracy Cats channel. So it was, I, I, yeah, the, the channels were, were going nowhere because I was just so busy. So it was a case of just pass them on so someone can use them properly. Yeah, so you mentioned in, well, in one of those videos towards the end with that, you know, you felt the audience deserved more content. And I think that was very noble of you to pass those channels on. You know, the Baldy Cats channel went to Mr. Sensible. And for those who don't know, the Conspiracy Cats channel became MC Tunes channel, not his live channel, but his Conspiracy Tunes channel. So that, yeah, that's really cool. And I think they've both done a good job in growing the channel. However, I don't know if you know anything about this, but Mr. Sensible hasn't posted a video in three months or so. Do you know anything about that? Um, I, I, I've spoke to him I say spoke to him. We've exchanged messages on on Twitter, um, and I uh, we have talked about maybe supporting each other on a little bit of a comeback, if you like, um, to to YouTube. So I don't think that's the last we're going to see of Mister Sensible. I know he's 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 been very very busy, but I've not I've not tried to pry as to why he's been away. But I I, I do get the impression he's had a lot of stuff on. But I do believe he's coming back. You mentioned a couple of years ago you were you were extremely busy working seven days a week. As a matter of fact, when I spoke with Dan, Simon Dan, I asked him about you off camera after we stopped recording. 
And he said that you're just extremely busy, busier than him, he said. What was going on in your life? He said you were working seven days a week. And do I remember this correct? Did he say that you might be writing a book or am I just totally making that up? No, you're not making it up at all. I, I basically was working two full time because I'd come out of teaching full time to set up my own business. Uh, we were we took tutors into schools and we taught because I was a teacher for, for 20 years. And then um, we we went into schools and we taught um, difficult kids, you know, we, so we, we'd go in and there's always funding available in schools for for specialists to come in and, and do that kind of thing. So I was doing that during the day. I was tutoring during the evening because I was self-employed. So if, if you're self-employed, you've never been self-employed before and somebody says, do you want some work? The answer is yes. You know, that's how I found it. So I just accepted everything. But I, I did get a, um, a, the books are written now. We, we wrote some books for um, America, but that, that was all in the evenings and at the weekends. So I had two, basically two jobs plus the textbooks I was writing, which went on for about two and a half years, which are all now done. Um, and we'll see how that pans out. I wanted to speak to you about teaching because, you know, anyone who watches your content knows that you're a teacher. Uh, you've been teaching for, what, 20 years, you said? Yeah, 2000 and actually 2001, I did my teacher training. So I did 20 years pretty much full time in the classroom. And then since then, like I say, I still, I still work in education. I still tutor. I still every now and then pop into school or, or whatnot. But I'm not like a proper full time teacher anymore. I actually was a teacher. Actually, we started around the same time. I started teaching in... 2004 so i guess a little bit later than you but i didn't last 20 years i ended up changing careers a few years later but tell tell me more about what you teach i know you teach science but is it high school and is it well i you know high school here in the states i don't know if you call it high school over there but uh, what subject do you teach is it specific or just science in general to high school kids um well, first of all i had no idea you were a teacher i'd love to see what you you taught that's really interesting to me that um so yeah, over here, when we teach science at secondary school, um, so secondary school for us is 11 to 18 year olds. A lot of schools have 11 to 16 year olds and then a separate accommodation for 16 to 18 year olds. But I, I taught 11 to 18 year olds science. And the way it basically works is between 11 and 16, you're expected to be able to teach biology, chemistry, physics up to kind of like higher GCSE level. So I did that. And then at A level, um, which is like 16 to 18. I don't know what that equivalent is in, in the States, but um, just before they go off to university, I taught physics to that age range. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, for here, it's 14 to 18 is high school, so it's four years. Um, and you're referring to the last two years of high school, which, yeah, in, in the States here, basically you would get a subject teacher specific for, science, for chemistry, biology, physics. They, they would be subject matter specific teachers. So what was your subject? What did you teach? I was a math teacher. So I taught algebra, oh. geometry, and trigonometry to the high school kids. It, nice. it wasn't even what I went to school for. It was just when I graduated college in 2004, I immediately went into subbing at my old high school. I became a substitute teacher because getting a job here in the city, it was, the economy was poor. I had a math-related degree, uh, finance and economics, and I was always a really strong math student. And... When I graduated, I was still in contact with some of the teachers there at my, at my old school. And they said, hey, you should get your substitute teacher license. Come on, we need, you know, we need you while you're looking for a job. So I started substitute teaching. I taught there for the last month of school. I actually filled in for a math teacher who I think she was pregnant and took the last month of school off before the summer. So I took over her class for the entire month of June. And towards the end of that, they said, hey, why don't you go and get your license, which for me required taking a bunch of exams. Uh, content and, and general, all these educational exams required here in the city <clears throat> and a couple of extra credits that I hadn't taken as an undergrad. And I was able to get a temporary license by the time September rolled around and they hired me. So I taught, I taught math for a number of years. Yeah. A little bit about YouTube. So without coming back, we already discussed how you, you gave up your two channels. You might even have had more channels. I keep discovering channels. As a matter of fact, yesterday I, I finally came across your eight out of 10 cats channel. Is that, is that your channel? Or you just participate in that? It's, it's, it's a new thing that I co-own with, with a guy called Doom. The idea, I put a tweet out one day saying that I wanted to open up a debate channel. And Doom, who co-owns it with me, 
really really good guy he's kind of been in the community for years like posting and you know you you get you'll have it yourself you'll have the subscribers that you know will always come back and you you build up like a relationship with them and uh, and he said well I, i'll quite happily work with you on something so we set up the channel and it is it it's not primarily a debate channel. We are going to host lots of debates, but really we decided that we're just going to do whatever we want to do. We're just going to do stuff. And if, it, if, if we think we find this entertaining, we're going to do a show on it. So, you know, it's the Euros over here and we're doing some watch along with the football. We've done a death penalty debate. We've done a crop circle debate. Um, we've done a sporting moments show. We, 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 we don't know what we are. We're just having fun. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, good, it's a good chill place. I wanted to ask you about the Simon Dan podcast. So for those who don't know, this was almost, uh, well, it started what you guys started three years ago. Format was similar to this. It was a conversation. It was actually you and Dan, and you had a guest. But suddenly, after 37 episodes, it, there was no more. Whatever happened to that? Why did that come to such a sudden end? Oh, it's it, it's coming back. It, it was it was always like Dan does things in in seasons. Like he did his Simon Dan show along his normal content. Like he had like a season of that. He did a a season of the podcast. It's actually the podcast was actually split over two seasons with a break between it. It's been just a longer break than normal between this and the last one. Uh, and it really is Simon Dan's thing. I I am honoured to be on it because we get to speak to some amazing people. But it but I literally just trap up on the night and and sit in and get a chance to speak to these people but it is simon dan's bag like he um you know he he plans out all the questions he he puts all the effort in to get the guests and it's, it's been brilliant but i do know he has spoken to me about perhaps me being on a couple of the ones in the next season um which isn't going to be too far away and some of the guests he's talking about i won't give any spoilers out there because it's not my thing to spoil but um yeah some of the guests he's mentioned are going to be quite exciting Oh, that's cool. That's good news. I definitely look forward to it. Yeah. And again, everyone, if you want to check out what I'm talking about, link is in the description below. Let's get back to the Culture Cats channel. So this is Cats' new channel. You've been running this channel for over a year. Is that right? Well, I started posting uh, to the Con uh, Culture Cats channel as soon as I gave away my others. But it was just silly little videos I could put together in the two hours I had free on a Sunday morning. All that's gone now. Um, then I, I ended up, because I was so busy just taken an entire year off and I've been back maybe about two months, two and a half months, but I am back regular now. Um, and, uh, so I'll say the channel really, everything that's on the channel has been put up in the last two and a half months and, um, I'm enjoying it. I, I am really, really enjoying it because I, I get to do whatever I want to do, whatever I want to do, whether it's, um, go to a, you know, drive down to Stockport to check out an illegal school or go and sit in with Mark Steele or just sit and make a, a reaction video. You know, I'm not, I don't feel typecast anymore because I've been away for so long. So I, I, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a good bit of fun. I'm actually a member of your channel, which you know, I really like that you, you're providing some behind the scenes and some extra content. If you're a fan of cats like I am, make sure you check that out and consider becoming a member of his channel because the extra content is, is quite cool. And I haven't been able to attend one of your member only live streams, but uh, hopefully we'll be at the next one. It's been a couple of weeks since your, your previous one. Yeah, I want to. I want to do them monthly. Um, so I, I was actually planning to do one this weekend, but I forgot it was the football. And, and uh, until I, I couldn't pin a date down, about, we had this problem with the the podcast because I didn't know whether England were going to be playing uh, last night or today right. or what time until the fixtures came in. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do one next weekend um, just to do a, a monthly one. It's nice, but time zones are a pain. You know, time zones are a pain. What's good for me is, you know, four o'clock in the morning for a lot of you guys. So, so, yeah, we're five hours apart. Is most of your audience from the states? Do you know? Most, yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. But uh, all, not over fifty percent, but the biggest proportion. I think about YouTube says just below forty percent, and then I think I've got about twenty percent from the UK, and then the rest are made up from from all around. While we're on the subject of the Culture Cats channel, let's talk about your recent video or your recent trip to, to go and see Mark Steele. He gave a presentation in your neighborhood almost, and you went to see him live. And you just give us a brief overview for those people who haven't seen your video. Yeah, so Mark, Mark Steele is basically very, very well known in the UK as being somebody that drives this narrative that 5G is harmful and uh, that leads to things like people cutting down 5G towers. Uh, he spends a lot of misinformation. 
And he, he came to Burnley, which is about eight miles away from me, <clears throat> to do a talk. And uh, and you could pay in to get on the door. It wasn't too expensive. So I, I went and, yeah, spent the afternoon with about 50 to 60 people who believed every conspiracy under the sun. It was a real, real eye-opener. Now, in your video about that, you a couple of things stood out to me. Which One was you said everyone was incredibly friendly. Except maybe one lady who was a little bit skeptical that you were a Sky News reporter, apparently. But you said everyone else was just unusually friendly almost. Is, is that is that right? Yeah, I mean, I, they really were from the minute I walked, because I, I went on my own and I thought I'm going to walk in the door and everybody else is going to be there with people. And I thought it's going to be difficult to get to chat to people. But as soon as I walked through the door, people were coming and talking to me. They were dead nice. And I think, I mean, I, I'm no psychologist, right? So I might just be way off mark here. But I think that they they had almost like a sense of relief that they were in a place where they could talk about all these things they wanted to talk about without being, you know, being ridiculed or told to shut up or, or whatever. And so they, you know, they were just kind of embracing any conversation they could have. It was almost like, oh, it's a chance to get get this off my chest. And, uh, you know, we're all kind of in the same boat together type feeling. They were like super, super, super friendly, nice people. It was the friendliest atmosphere I've, I've been in, you know. It was, it was odd, really odd. Besides being friendly, you also mentioned that you were convinced that they were all authentic. I don't know if that includes Mark Steele himself. It seemed like his brother, what was his, is Greg? Graham, Graham. Graham, right. And you interacted with him quite a bit. He actually gave you the permission to film, but he also <laughs> tested, <laughs> tested you for Wi-Fi coming out of your arm. He, he was brilliant. <laughs> I, I honestly thought uh, Graham and Mark, before I met them, I thought, you know, they're probably grifters, whatnot. I don't. I don't think that now. I think I genuinely think they believe it. Graham spent about 40, 40 minutes with me throughout the afternoon, just talking to me. Even when the woman said, "I think he's a reporter," he defended me. He was like, "Well, I don't care, even if he is." You know, he, he just like whatever. And then he carried on talking to me for another half hour. And yeah, he pulled out his phone. He got the Wi-Fi detail. Oh, it was a Bluetooth thing, and uh, and it was a static screen. And he goes, look at that. And then he held it at my arm and it was a static screen. Nothing changed. And he went, look at it now. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was fun. I think you're actually leaving out a, a funny detail there from the original story. You said he actually asked you if you're vaccinated. You said, yeah. And oh, then yes. he asked you which arm, which I think is so funny because we, I wish you would have said to him, well, can't you tell? And he was, you said he was totally serious. Oh, t t and there, there was more. Like, he was showing me uh, messages he got from people on his phone, obviously other people that think uniquely like him. And, um, you know, like video clips, which I could see looking at these video clips he was showing me, that they were just people messing about on TikTok, but he was taking it very, very seriously. And, you know, but he, yeah, he believed it. He believed it 100%. And I genuinely got the feeling, never thought I'd say this, but I genuinely got the feeling he really thought that he was doing good and he was he was kind of on the side of of um, truth and justice and, and righteousness and whatever. He's, he, he seemed quite a religious guy, and so yeah, you know, I'm sure he's a nice bloke. But I think the misinformation they put out is 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 pretty harmful. It seems that you think even Mark Steele, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, you think that he is in fact genuine. I, I, I do now, and uh, in, on terms of the money, I've been trying to do some kind of like little post-it note calculations on what everybody earned. On the day, there were three speakers. We paid 20 quid to get in, and there was about 50 people there. So you think there's a thousand pound there, you've got three speakers. They've hired the room out, and they've hired two bar staff for the entire day. So they've paid two entire day wages, and I imagine a bar, you know, the bar staff might get maybe, for the hours they were there, 60, 70 quid each and the room. So let's take 200 pound off that. Then suddenly you've got 800 pound left between the three speakers. They put food on for everybody. They bought merchandise to give away in a raffle for everybody. So I imagine maybe another 80 quid gone there. And then they've driven down from Gateshead or they've driven up from London, they've booked accommodation to stay. I think when you take what's left from the day, I'd be amazed if they earn even 50 quid each, you know? And so I, I really don't think that any of them would have made any money off that uh, not 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 money that you couldn't have earned doing a shift in tesco's next to your house you know for for half the time right yeah that says something if they're not making a lot 
You also mentioned another thing that happened during that, they, that you said they brought up a WhatsApp message that seemed to you obvious to be totally bogus and did not really resemble WhatsApp, but everyone else in the room seemed to just nod along and totally agree and not question where you were like, is anyone going to speak up about this? This is, looks not, like nonsense. It, it was really odd. I have done a little bit of research into that. Um, now, Matt Hancock over here did have some of his WhatsApp messages leaked. Um, now, we all know what WhatsApp looks like when you open it. And when they put the message on the screen, it looked nothing like WhatsApp at all. It looked it looked like a child had tried to recreate a WhatsApp message using PowerPoint. It, it was absolutely not. But the text that was on there that they put in was actually, um, I've since found out, the text from the leaked WhatsApp messages from really? uh, Matt Hancock. But it was part of a longer conversation where he was having a joke. You know, part of the conversation before was, oh, I bet the conspiracy nuts are having a laugh and blah, blah. And then they screenshotted a small, uh, they took some text, sorry, from a small part of that where Hancock mentioned microchips in arms. And that's what they created this ridiculous fake WhatsApp message from. So maybe there was a half truth in there. But it, yeah, it, it it still blew my mind that everyone just looked at it and, and wouldn't question yeah. it at all. I'm sure that place is basically the definition of an echo chamber. I think that's a big part of the problem when it comes to conspiracy theories is people are stuck in their echo chamber. As a teacher, do you think that if you had the opportunity to sit down with whether it's a flat earther or someone from this meeting and sit down one-on-one -on -one in person for whatever amount of time, however long it may take, a couple hours, let's say, or even a couple of sessions, would you be able to dispel this nonsense and show them that this is all untrue? Do you think you'd be able to accomplish that? How do you think that would work out? I, I don't think, um, I don't think I could. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that because I think it depends on the the mental state of the the flat earth and whether they are ready or not to um, to really kind of be open to to accepting other information. So, I mean, you, you've had Rachie five zeros on. Um, on here, Rach mm -hmm. is brilliant. Always, even when Rachie was kind of like a flat earther, and I was still making content then, always got on really, really well with Rachie. Had Rachie on my channel, yeah, brilliant. But when she was a flat earther, I made a video for her. It was a really, really serious video, and I put lots and lots and lots of effort into it. Lots of expert, and I knew she would watch it because we got on so well. She wouldn't just dismiss it. She'd be, you know, just out of kind of like I suppose respect for me. She she will have sat there and watched the whole thing. And it didn't touch the sides in terms of making any difference whatsoever. But a little bit further down the line, um, you know, she's obviously got herself in, a, in a, a frame of mind where she's a bit more receptive and something else has obviously then, you know, changed her mind. And it was the same with Ranty. <clears throat> Me and Ranty did a podcast together while he was still a flat earther. And I, we, we made the agreement, we're never even going to talk about flat earth because it will only lead to arguments. So we just don't talk about it. But then he got himself in a frame of mind uh, where he was a bit open to stuff and he, and he snapped himself out of it, you know? So, no, I, I don't. It's, that's, that's a long answer to what should have been a very sh short question. The answer is no, I don't think I could, no matter what I said. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how I feel. I, I like to think that I could, but yeah, you might be right. It's, I don't really know. What, what I find really worrying today is, is away from the flat earth, the kind of misinformation that's out there regarding, for example, I'll not mention the word because it, it, it tends to get videos demonetized, but um, to do with the pandemic, et cetera. So you know what we're talking about here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, the, the, the kind of scientific reasons that people are, are spreading as to why the data shouldn't be believed for, for that have a lot of nuance in them and they're very, very difficult to, you know, it's very easy to, 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 to know why pouring water on a ball, it won't stick anyway. But when, when you start saying, well, why would a PCR test not be affected if you ran a million cycles, for example, um, unless someone's got, uh, like a deeper set of knowledge about, well, what is the cycle threshold? How does PCR differ from real time quantitative PCR, et cetera. It's really, really difficult for the average man on the street. To, to separate pseudoscience and, and nonsense from what's actually true. So I, I think, uh, yeah, some, some conspiracies at the minute are becoming harder and harder and harder to, to debunk for, for that reason. Bill Maher, I, I don't know if anyone else saw this watching, but Bill Maher recently did a, a skit in his show, 
he was talking about how the majority of conspiracy theorists, whether it's QAnon or the election or vaccines, are senior aged white women. Really? And That's a demographic. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. And I, I can actually kind of see that. And he was chalking it up to, well, they don't have the immunity that the younger generations have against misinformation. They're used to, you know, fake news. And then they go down to Facebook vortex and they're just more susceptible. What do you think? Was the majority of the people at this Mark Steele meeting, do they match that demographic or was it a mix? You, you know what? Yeah. Thinking about it. Yes. <laughs> Like there were plenty yeah. of tables of, of like, you know, 45 plus, you know, like uh, women sat, you know, in the little groups, like it was a Sunday lunch. So yeah, that's, that is interesting. Now I'll look out for that in future because I never really thought about it that way. But you are right. A lot of them were in that kind of demographic. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Same here. I think that there's a lot of truth to that, especially what I observe here in the States. And you, know, you might be right about the reasons. He, he goes into a little bit more detail and it's quite funny. I'll, I'm going to link Bill Maher's video in the description for anyone interested. Switching subjects, we're not going to talk too much about Flat Earth, but have to ask you your thoughts on the final experiment. Now, for those who don't know, the final experiment is essentially a group of prominent or online content creators that are both Flat Earthers as well as Globers or anti-flat earthers, debunkers. The person who's putting the trip together. I'm Will Duffy. Other is actually offering to pay for one flat earther and one globe earther. All expenses paid. A lot of other people are invited, just they'll have to pay their own way. It seems like this trip may in fact happen. I know the first person asked on the flat earth side was flat earth Dave, and he promptly declined uh, to no one's real surprise. Anyway, I'm sorry. The whole point of the trip was to go to Antarctica, one, to prove it exists and you can go there, I suppose, but mainly to observe the 24-hour sun or not observe because there's a lot of flat earthers on record saying that the 24-hour sun doesn't exist and if it did, it would essentially disprove the flat earth model. This is supposed to happen either later this year or early next year. What do you think will come of this, Cats? I have my own opinion, but I'm going to Keep it to myself. I want to hear yours first. Let's say this trip actually happens. What do you think will come of it? So the trip actually happens. Two possible outcomes. If we're assuming the trip happens. Yeah. The flat earther will will observe the 24 hour, um, you know, sunlight and then come up with an alternative reason as to why that would happen on a flat earth. Done. Or... <laughs> The flat earther, while they are there and, you know, maybe having conversations with people may slowly, like we say, get themselves in a frame of mind where they're thinking, okay, maybe I'm wrong here. And then they are immediately called out by the rest of the flat earth community as being a shill and uh, never a true flat earther all along. And, uh, and that will happen. One of the two, I think. I hadn't thought of your second option, but that seems very, very possible. Didn't that even happen with Bob? Because I feel like we've done this before. The, the documentary behind the curve, we had Bob with his ring laser gyroscope. I feel like that's a very similar type of experiment. Proves rotation. It was proven by a flat earther. No one's mind was changed. I, I, I agree. I don't think that the final experiment is going to change anyone's mind. It, I, it'll be interesting to see. I think your two potential reasons, one of them is going to be the case. Maybe even both will be the case. I was thinking the whole community will just, if they don't turn on that person, like you said, and just call them a shill and say this didn't happen and deny all the video evidence, they might just say, hey, well, they weren't in Antarctica. They were in whatever the flat earthers have in the center of their map. And yeah, from there, they'll just say, oh, from there, you can see the sun go round and round. They must have been in the center because the sun goes around. Good on everyone who's going. Have fun. This is certainly not the end of flat earth if it actually happens, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely not. Unfortunately, but yeah, definitely not. Switching gears once again, young earth creationists. I'm going to ask you about two in particular, Ken Hoban and Matt Powell, who are online and making money via content creation. Do they believe what they say? I, I think they probably do, but I, I think it's down to the fact that obviously, you know, that when, you, when you're religious, when you're really deeply into it, um, I don't think they feel the need to really look at the science. I think, I think if they can find any kind of quick hand wave quote 
to dismiss, you know, the entirety of radiometric dating or the entirety of genetic analysis, whatever, they'll find that. The reason I say it is, have you heard the leaked footage of Matt Powell arguing with somebody about a window? No, no. So somebody else who is a creationist or part of his church, um, it, it should be online somewhere, uh, was trying to fix a window or it was just it was just the most bizarre thing. Uh, or he hadn't turned up to fix the window properly or he hadn't been paid for fixing the window. And he was arguing with Matt Powell and Matt Powell got extremely aggressive in the audio. He didn't know he was being recorded, but the kind of language that was coming out of his mouth were things like, you know, you are going to be burning in hell. Uh, you know, you are, he, he was using a lot of like that kind of like religious language. So if that's him off guard when when he, he doesn't think he's being recorded, that to me really kind of confirmed he does believe all this nonsense, you know. Um, and, and therefore, if you are that deeply religious and you think God created everything, it doesn't really matter what the science says because the science isn't going to be as important as the God you believe in, so it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I, I, I believe they, they do believe it. doesn't mean I think they're nice people, but I, I believe they believe it. Yeah, interesting. I, I'm skeptical, but that's I hadn't heard that audio. and that, I, I don't know. I've never spoken with them before. I'm just guessing. I, I suspect that they are grifters to some degree i think there's a gray area in between this goes for all kinds of conspiracy theorists particularly flat earthers i think they definitely believed it at one time and i, I believe the audience and most young earth creationists in the world that are not making content and all that and just are what they are they, they certainly believe it but so my question is about the the content creators and the, the people who are making money off it i think that there's a bit of dishonesty there but that's interesting what you said about matt powell and that i'm I wonder if I could find that audio online. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. I mean, it's been a long time since I saw it, but I'll see if I can track it down. And, and if I can, I'll send you the link. But uh, interestingly, another person that springs to mind when you, you say that is uh, Nathan Oakley. I, I, were, you, were you around when uh, he accidentally screen shared his screen during a debate? Um, about, and he, he was admitting to a lighthouse being perfect proof of the globe. Did you see I that? thought you were going to talk about the leaked audio with Anthony Riley. I don't know. I've, I have heard know about that, and I've heard his defense of that. I don't know what you're talking about with the lighthouse. Explain. Oh, I don't know what the leaked audio is with Anthony Riley. We can swap stories here. Um, <laughs> okay. He, so there's a guy on YouTube called Cat Earther. I don't know if he's still got a channel, but he was a guest on Nathan Oakley's show. And uh, th th this is back when whatever package they were using, I don't know, maybe it was Discord, maybe it was something else. But in the middle of the show, uh, Nathan Oakley did a screen share to everyone in the call, but he he accidentally shared a private conversation he was having with Anthony Riley. And this guy, Cat Earther, just print screened it and, and kept it. And basically, they were talking about a lighthouse and Nathan Oakley and Riley were having a conversation behind the scenes. And Oakley was trying to guide Riley into what he should and shouldn't say. Um, and it was quite funny because Riley was completely oblivious. He had no idea what the nuance of the argument was. But but the the meat and potato of it is Nathan Oakley said, we cannot talk about this position of the lighthouse because it is perfect proof of the globe. Right. Absolute perfect uh, proof, um, which, of course, meant that, you know, he's not being honest during his show. He knows he knows what he, he shouldn't be talking about. And yeah, very, very dishonest. So what we're, we're talking the about the same you? thing. No, we're talking about the oh. same thing. Yeah, I only know this secondhand. I haven't heard it myself. I, Creaky spoke about it, my conversation with Creaky on my show here. Uh, Nathan, actually, he, he reacted to my conversation. I, I think it was actually my conversation with Dan that he was reacting to, which it came up in that conversation also when I asked Dan about Nathan's level of honesty or dishonesty. So Nathan was reacting to that conversation, and he gave an explanation. I'm sure he's defended it many times in the past, but uh, on his reaction to my video, he, he defended what he said. is perfect evidence for the globe. We can't show this. Dave and Dan, gave, Dave McKeegan and Dan, gave the best reaction when I asked him about Nathan's uh, honesty. Is he a true flat earther? Not a bloody chance in hell. 100% not a flat earther. And they're both essentially 100% sure that he's completely dishonest and just a grifter. That's my stance. I have prepared a conspiracy tier list. As you know, I shared the link with you just prior to us recording. And so if you wouldn't mind sharing screen and bringing that up, I am curious to see how you rank these conspiracies. Share screen. Here we go. Right. right. So I just drag and drop them. You can drag and drop them. Of course, down the left-hand side, we go from uh, most harmful to society. So life and death. 
to all the way at the bottom, harmless hokum. I'm gonna Let's I'm go. gonna go right from the top. I'm gonna go for the most dangerous ones first. Uh, Got to have the anti-vax movement in there, haven't we? Got to have the anti-vax movement in there. Uh, healing practices. I've made even on the Culture Catch channel. I've made videos about people ending up losing their life because of dodgy uh, practices like that. Um, Okay, I think that's it for life and death. Society fracturing. Yeah, we'll have the politicians and illegal child sex rings. We'll have uh, <laughs> QAnon. See, I don't know a lot about QAnon, so maybe some people might be saying that's life threatening because I have, I know it's quite a big thing, but I, I don't actually know a lot about it. Um, am I putting that on the wrong list there? Do they have some quite life, life and death kind of views? That's fine. That's okay. Um, let's have a look. UFOs and aliens are real. You know, I'm going to put that in Hark, uh, harmless Hokum. I'll tell you why. Because there's a difference between acknowledging that there's a chance that, that somewhere in the vastness of the universe, right, uh, there'll be some kind of alien life. There's a difference between that and saying, oh, aliens are here and they're running the White House or whatever. However, however slim that chance is, and it's that the aliens have ever visited the Earth, it has to be greater than 0%, even if it's like 0, 0.0, you know, a million zeros afterwards and then a one. It's got to be, it's got to be greater than zero. So I'm going to put that there. Yeah, real quick. I'm so glad you said that. I was actually hesitant to put that in here as a conspiracy because I am, I, it sounds like we're aligned. I don't feel that aliens, I mean, there are components that, you know, Area 51 and was that a conspiracy and a cover up or was it a crash landed UFO? Sure. But aliens themselves existing? Is certainly not not far fetched. It's somewhere in the universe, once you understand how large the universe is, and then mm -hmm. it's not a huge leap to say, okay, well, there must be alien life out there. It's it's not crazy to say that they're they're either here or have been here some time in the last few billion years. So it's it's not absurd. I hate when people group in aliens with like ghosts and Bigfoot, but it's not it's yeah. not the same. Nevertheless, it's here. Where, where did Definitely. you end up placing that? You ended up placing that under right in the bottom. Harmless Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so this one here, it says seems possible. Like, would that be where the, it actually seems genuinely seems possible. Oh, I should explain this. So idiocracy is a movie for those who don't know. So it's a, it's a popular movie from I don't know, probably a decade ago. And the premise of the movie real quick is basically that the dumb and uneducated portion of the population reproduced at a much faster rate than the intelligent people. Like the intelligent people are like, ah, we're not going to have kids. We might have one. And the dumb and ignorant population we're having five six kids and sometime in the future fast forward a few hundred years the population of earth was just a bunch of complete dopes there's basically no smart people left they were watering crops with gatorade tastes like gatorade they're watering crops with a sports drink oh. they were on the brink of collapse it was, it was, it's a comedy it's hilarious but you could actually see it happening. So that's what I meant by idiocracy seems possible. Is it going to lead to this dumbed down society that's going to be watering crops with Gatorade? Well, definitely in that case, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go. There's quite a few that are going to fit in the 5G causes cancer. Now, <sighs> mm, that's a Mark Steele one. Yeah. Now I'm going to put society fraction. Uh, when I was at that talk there was a lot of people talking about how justifiable it was to um to basically pick up criminal charges for for chopping down these towers he, he mark Steele actually offered to be the legal uh, uh advisor or legal counsel for anybody caught doing stuff like that so moon landing was fake i think that's no good now thinking with the moon landing being fake this will get clipped and shared out between all the flat earthers etc it wasn't fake. And the reasons that they give it for being faked, you know, are obviously so easily debunked, etc. However, um, you know, is it is it something that just recreating that footage? Would that be would that be impossible? I don't know. Back in the day, I don't know. Would, would the technology back in the day allow them to create footage like that, do you think? Or potentially, I'm not an expert. I know people have said it would be near impossible but i don't know i i wouldn't say the footage looks old i don't see why not just because they can just, create the footage in a studio doesn't mean it was mm, exactly yeah yeah oh, um yeah, the cia assassinating jfk 
I'm going to put as harmless Hogan main just because I think at this point in time, uh, there's so many theories about JFK. Like I, I watched Michael Francisi on uh, YouTube. I don't know if you're familiar with Michael Francisi. No. I might be pronouncing his name wrong. Francisi. He's the ex um, the ex mafia man that, that's now uh, gone. You know, he's been gone straight for like twenty odd years, but he has a, a channel, and he, his, his dad was quite high up in the mafia, and he's actually made some videos on JFK. I think I've seen an interview with him or something along those lines. I, I, I'm not that familiar, but I, it sounds, yeah, I think I've seen a video of his or two. Yeah. He's, he's very, very interesting. And he, he'll talk about figures like Donald Trump and his experience of their ties with the mafia in his day. And, and he has mentioned JFK a few times and he's convinced that the, the mob had something to do with it. Uh, hmm. Psychic readings, I don't like, but it's down there. COVID-19 is Chinese bioweapon there chemtrails uh, definitely make things awkward i'm bigfoot i'm gonna say uh harmless hokum with bigfoot you know is it impossible some animal like that may have evolved into existence no is it possible that an animal like that could live there without ever sh like being found after it dies or ever being detected in any any way shape or form yeah but you know i suppose it could have evolved just not without leaving any evidence. So, yeah. I actually agree with almost everything in where you put them. There's one thing that stood out to me as, as something I would have ranked a little bit different, which was the psychic readings. Mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit more problematic than just making holidays awkward. It's it's bordering on the faith healing or and stuff like that because they're, they're all grifters, literally every single one of them. Yeah, And I, I think that they can, sometimes they're trying to do good and they can make people believe that they were in touch with their loved one that's passed away and that they're happy and they said go live your life and stuff like that but i think they can really mess with people's mind self-proclaimed psychic sylvia brown brown told the distraught parents that sean was dead and told them in great detail where to search for his body then sylvia brown confirmed their worst fears is he still with us Thankfully, Sean Hornbeck was found last week alive and well. Hearing that was one of the hardest things we ever had had to hear. And in some cases, you know, tell people uh, you don't need to worry about this or that when they really should be worried about this or that. And that can lead to some some serious outcomes, whether it's health or, or financial. So I would have ranked that a little bit higher. But everything else, yeah, I think we're, we're pretty much on the same page. That's a really good point about the psychic readings, actually, because um, I kind of just read that as, you know, psychic, I can read your mind, tarot card type stuff. But you are right. But um, when it comes to the the mediums and the clairvoyance, I've got a big uh, distaste for them. And actually, I've spent the last couple of days on online looking for clairvoyance and mediums in my local area, and I've been sending them WhatsApps. But I've only been messaging them if they say on the the website that they can provide evidence that the past on loved ones are still there. You know, if, if they say we will provide you with evidence that they're still there. And surprisingly, there's a lot that, that say that. And I've WhatsApp them because they have the phone numbers, uh, obviously. Thing. And I've, and I've said, look, I'm going to be straight. I want to come and have you do a reading with me cold. I want to record it. I want your permission to have it unedited up on a YouTube channel to uh, evaluate the accuracy of what you, uh, of, of what you're saying. And not only has nobody said yes, nobody's even replied. Nobody's even got back to say no. They've just, I've been blanked. Yeah, no surprise there for me. That doesn't mm. surprise me at all. Let's get to one more thing. I have something that you and Dan used to do in your podcast with each guest. You did guess the conspiracy. Now, a little bit different in this case. I, uh, well, for one, I don't have any music. I also don't have a partner, obviously. Uh, in your version, for those who don't know, Dan and Katia made up a conspiracy, so one each, and then they had a conspiracy that was actually real. And by real, I mean it existed in the real world, not that it's true, of course. And so they would read the three conspiracies to their guest, and the guest had to pick which one was the real conspiracy. In my case, I used ChatGPT to make up one of the conspiracies. So my, I'm going to read you three. One of them will be made up by me. One of them will be made up by ChatGPT, and one will be, of course, real. You being you and who you are, you're going to need to identify which is which. So not only just which is real, but 
importantly, which one I made up and which one was made up by ChatGPT. All right. Ready? Okay. Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'll put these on screen for the viewers, but read them to you. The Dream Broadcasting Project. So the top secret project aims to infiltrate and manipulate dreams of individuals through advanced technology and subliminal programming in order to guide public opinion, consumer behavior, and political preference. That was the Dream Broadcasting Project. All right, number two, dinosaurs built the pyramids. According to this theory, ancient civilizations domesticated dinosaurs and used them as labor to build monumental structures such as the pyramids. That was dinosaurs built the pyramids. Number three, Elon Musk has an identical twin, an identical twin brother. And while Elon is responsible for Tesla and SpaceX, it's actually his brother, Leon, who handles the management of X, aka Twitter. So that was Elon Musk has an identical twin. There was dinosaurs built the pyramids. And the first one was the Dream Broadcasting Project. Okay. I'm going to say the Dream Broadcasting Project was chat GTP. I'm going to say the dinosaurs and the pyramids was you. And I'm going to say the real one was Elon Musk and his twin brother. Okay. So close. You were right about the Dream Broadcasting Project. That, in fact, was ChatGPT. The other two you had reversed. I made up the Elon Musk conspiracy. And turns out the dinosaurs built the pyramids is a real thing if you Google it. <laughs> Some people, I suppose, do believe that. But good try. That was good. You know, so, uh, the, challenge, the challenge with asking ChatGPT for conspiracies and it made up so many for me to choose from. And the, but then I have to go and make sure that it doesn't exist in the real world. I keep insisting to ChatGPT, make sure this is not a real conspiracy. You need to make it up from scratch. And nine out of 10 were a real thing. Almost like everything is conspiracy. Is sh- I couldn't believe it. You could find anything but on the web. But all right. So we're, we're basically out of time, cats. I don't want to keep you. I know you've got a, a packed schedule this afternoon. So I just want to thank you for doing this. It's been a lot of fun. I hope we can do it again sometime. Mate, I've really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'd love to, to do some work with you in the future. I like to say, I'm a big fan of, of you know, watching your videos and, and uh, like I've seen all your interviews and stuff up to now. So yeah, really uh, chuffed to have been here. It's been great fun. And yeah, definitely let's do something together. All right, cool. Yeah, I will definitely keep in touch and I appreciate that. Thanks a lot, cats. See you next time. See you. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, do me a favor and leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts on the tier list and guess the conspiracy and if I should do more things like that with future guests. Also, what did you think of the 10 second intro? Of course, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.